Good morning, folks, and welcome to Hu Hu Ha Tu in Inner Mongolia, China. My name is Liam Lonsdale, and we are live for the men's and women's lead finals here in this 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup, brought to you by the North Face. More than 50 athletes made the journey here to Inner Mongolia, and of those athletes, eight men and eight women qualified yesterday for the finals this morning. We have a stunning piece of action lined up, but before we take a look at what's going to happen, why don't we check out yesterday's highlights? So, there it is again, that fantastic competition structure here in Ho Hu Ho Tu. A very good morning from Inner Mongolia. Local time here is 9.30 a.m. We're eight hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. That's about 16 hours ahead of West Coast California. Where are you tuned in from? We'd love to hear from you this morning. Drop us a comment in the chat box on YouTube and Facebook. Maybe you're tuned in on the Olympic channel. A very good morning to all of our viewers there. You can join the conversation using the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. And of course, you can always contact me directly on Facebook or Instagram using the tag at Liam Lonsdale. Let's take a look at the start list this morning. So, in the women's competition, brilliant to see Enni Bertling and Inika Raybergen making up the first two names in that final. Nadia Galyamova, who won speed in Rabenstein last week, joins us in third. Masha Edler for the fourth climber, Ekaterina Vlasova in the fifth. Masha Tolokanina in sixth. Ema McSwigan and Wunsion Shin making up the top two in the rankings. And in those men's start list, of course, these are in reverse order of qualification. Jung Yon Lee qualified in eighth. Dmitry Grabenikov in his final second of the season in second. Maxim and Alexei Tomilov, the brothers, making up third and fourth. Nikolai Kozovlev, fifth. Noah Bakes storming through qualifying there for the third position. Mohamed Reza Safdarian and Alexei Dengin as the top two. Action should be getting underway any second.
course, we're going to do our best to interact with you guys as and when we can. There are some limitations to what we can see here in China due to the inbound and outbound restrictions on the internet. But as and when we see it, we will shout you out, we'll answer your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now watching UIA Ice Climbing World Cup. This is coming up. Men and women lead final. Shudanamasahonomanansi <笑>对 so before we get going, let's take a look at that ranking list from yesterday. You can see it's in reverse order to the start list for the finals. The tops were achieved by Ima, Wunxian Shin and Maria Tolkanina. Now, Wunxian Shin goes into the first place because of the time that she took to top. Ima and Masha uh, following after that. Marian Filipova and Mira Alhonso tied in ninth and 10th, ever so close to making their, their finals there. Mira, it would have been her first final of the season. I have to say, after eating dinner with her last night, she was feeling ill, so it's probably uh, an escape not to have made it through. She needs to rest before Cheong Song next week. Kendra Stritch and Elena Kochegarova making up the bottom two of that women's ranking. In the men's ranking, of course, there were no tops. Alexei Dengin and Mohamed Reza Safdarian almost tied. Uh, a tool drop by Safdarian causing him to not be tied. Noah Bake, who climbed 90% of the route with a broken crampon front point, still managed to qualify in third place. Tied with Nikolai Kozovlev. The bottom half of the table, Nathan Kutcher, was painfully close. He actually was kicked out on a count back. Absolute heartbreaking stuff. It would have been great to see him in the finals, but that's the way competitions go. Tapio Alhonso and Kevin Linlow putting in great efforts and almost sitting in qualifying positions too. The bottom part of the table made up by David Buffard, who struggled with that first move, as did Sergei Tarasov at clip number three. Hopefully we won't see any low falls like that today, but you never know. The root setters, Vasily Terekin and Stanislav Lozbzov, could have all sorts of tricks up their sleeve. Of course, we have not seen the routes climbed yet. Athletes have had their observation period, and we will see the routes climbed for the first time in a few moments. We are due to start at 9.30, so we're slightly behind schedule. But as soon as it's ready, we'll be ready.
难度决赛很快就要开始了。没错，那稍后了将会是女子运动员登场，那么再交替进行男子、女子、男子、女子、男子这样交替的攀登。懂了，也就是说岩壁上面同时只会有一个人在爬吗？嗯，是的。那么我们就能够更加专心的。So we're pretty much ready to go with the first athlete, but before we start, I would like to introduce my co-commentator for this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to the USA's Kendra Stritch. Good morning. How are you? Good. Great to have you in the booth once more, although our booth this morning is slightly different to the ones that we've had so far this season. It is. It's it a lot warmer. Yeah. <laughs> if you tuned in to the semi-finals yesterday, you may have heard about the yurt that we're in. It's about 100 meters from the structure with a large coal fire just placed off center. Uh, and unfortunately, fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we're positioned next to said coal fire, which doesn't really have anything but full power. <laughs> yes, it's uh, quite warm in here. We've got plenty of water. We're going to stay hydrated. Uh, and so, Kendra, Let's get underway with the commentary because look on the screen now is Enni Berling and she from Finland has qualified for her first final of the season. Yeah, it's super exciting to see her out there. I know she was ready to get it done. No pressure today. She's just happy to be out there and climbing. Well, we're very pleased to see her. Of course, she made a finals last year in Chongsong. It was her first ever final. And we spoke last night and she said that she just needed to relax now and enjoy the climbing. Yep. So let's see if she can do that. Of course, this is the first time we've seen these routes climbed. And any moves off to a good start up those initial moves towards clip number one. Kendra, just talk us through the, the competition um, and the kind of setting that we're in and, and how it's been so far for you. Uh, this is an amazing new venue for us. We're out in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. Um, mountains off to one side, and um, camels, horses, sheep around. It's a new landscape to have a World Cup in, but it's been neat to be out here in this awesome new structure, which is great for spectating. It's been really fun to climb on, and the route, the Russian route setters have really provided great routes so far. Yeah, that was one thing that was talked about uh, quite a lot at the dinner table over the past <laughs> couple of days is the the fantastic job that Vasily Terekin and Stanislav Lobzov, both of Russia, uh, have done here. And they did a, a similarly good job last year in Beijing. They did. What is it that makes their setting so good? You know, they set, um, you know, it's techy, but not too tricky. You know, you get to think about it. They, they have really good movement. You're back and forth having to move your body. And um, they're fun to climb. They look good. Um, it so, looks, yeah. I, I like we're seeing that type of move straight away. Um, from the right-hand side, and he's having to move to the left. Now, she's got that hold as a hook from the, the left side, and she's moving well off it. Awesome. I was about to say it looked like she needed it as a stein placed low, but she's moved well off that as a hook and makes clip number two. The women here have eight minutes this morning. Yeah, so that's we were expecting a little longer. The routes are longer than yesterday. Um, looks like they actually even might be more moves than semifinals <coughs> in between two in the same space so we were expecting a little longer time but just eight minutes well let's see if that's enough for any yesterday she had plenty of time on the clock uh, when she did fall off at her high point yeah she was disappointed with that and she was she had found the route quite easy up until then and was just thinking okay now we're in the real climbing and then just popped off moved her tool a little bit Thankfully, it was still enough, but that means that that eighth place qualifying position is kind of deceptive for her because she was feeling so strong. Reaches up off that right hand to place the hook with the left. Very tenuous placement there. Although the hold looks big, it didn't look very secure. And we're seeing a lot of new holds here as well, Kendra. Yeah, we have uh, new Korean holds. We have new intellect Russian holds. So it's um, neat. We have seen some of these rock holds at the last competition or at least similar. These are the Chinese version, right? Yep. Very similar, though. So she's going to have to stay quiet on that hook, not pull out. Otherwise, she can come flying off. So that's why she's choosing to do a figure four there, so that her body weight keeps her tool steady on that hold. 
And he placing that Stein with the right hand. She's going to come across kick and then match in the low grip with the left. One of the things that seems to have been a theme this year, certainly in my commentary, is the the rise to fame of some of these athletes. Maybe fame's not the right word. Success, let's use. Uh, Mohamed Reza Safdarian, for example, the Finns, um, some of the Canadians, you know, relatively, uh, some of these athletes haven't comp been competing for a long time at all. And he, of course, only two years on the circuit. Uh, Dreza, only two years on the circuit, yet we're seeing them consistently making finals. We're seeing Dreza with gold medals. I think that's something we're going to see more of in ice climbing as the sport develops. But what is it that's making these um, particular athletes do so well in such a short time? Well, a lot of them are really dedicating significant training time over the year to just this style of climbing, not just climbing in general, but really focused on this style. And then we're also attracting already very strong climbers like the Finnish team. They're all 514 rock climbers, very experienced, been climbing for a long time. So they're not new to climbing and movement and these ideas. It's just learning the holds and the new movements. And they have structures now in Finland, which is obviously a big part of that, I guess. They do. And so, go on, carry oh, on, sorry. And a competition coming up in two weeks, right before the Russian World Cup. In Ulu, right? <laughs> yes. We had a laugh at the dinner table the other day because I couldn't remember the name of the, the place. And I said, pretty sure it's Honolulu. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not quite as warm there in Ulu as it will be in Honolulu. There's our first big move of the route. No trouble for any. She's so powerful. Great lock strength from clip six. Makes clip number seven. And we can really see the structures starting to steepen out now. You know, we were commenting yesterday that um, it was really the structure doesn't the steepness is so gradual that you never really feel the change and that that was that's really fun actually it's really nice um in italy on the, that women's qualifiers wall it looks like it's going to be a gradual change but when you get about a third of the way up all of a sudden you do feel it like there's a transition there mm -hmm. on this wall you it's super gradual it was really fun to climb on so Annie just shaking there at clip number seven. Doing our best to get online on the social channels and interact with you guys at home. But do leave us your messages and comments in the chat box on Facebook and YouTube. When we manage to get online, we will answer them. We will give you the shout outs and we'll do our very best. So here's clip number eight. One minute twenty-eight seconds remaining for Annie Bertling. She's spending a lot of time shaking. Definitely needs to pick up the pace. The top of the route, finishing in the apex of the arch. She's got a long way to go with only one minute fifteen remaining. Yeah, any any's the theme is usually that any needs to move faster. He's a very strong climber, but um, doesn't climb quickly, and it looks like that's going to be the downfall on this route. Uh, maybe she's a little gun shy from yesterday, having popped off that hold. Yeah, and there that hold with the left we saw on the women's route yesterday was a tricky move with the left hand to place it. Any moving to it confidently. Pulls across and hits the hook with the right. Places that really fir firmly and precisely. First go. It's a good clip for number nine with 27 seconds to go. Needs to stop shaking and make that move up to the next clip. If she can make that move to the red hold. There's only one more move to clip 10. Her teammates are out in the audience. I'm sure they are yelling at her right now to just move. <laughs> Five seconds to go and he really needs to move. Yeah, I think she's unaware of the time here because that was not smart climbing. We would have expected her to at least tag the hold to get the score on the hold. Or we're wrong on the time. No. We're never wrong on the time. We've got a Swiss timekeeper. <laughs> and he's still shaking. With American um, 
intel though so it's true <laughs> well she's still climbing so maybe we are wrong with the time maybe the women have 10 minutes and the men have eight maybe that's what it is maybe we got bad information i'm gonna say that's what happens I'm going to say it was my fault. It's your fault, isn't it, Kendra? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kendra Stritch is formally apologising on air. <laughs> so that's no problem. We don't know what time is left, but that's fine. We've got to freestyle this. Any Burtling with approximately 1 minute 30 seconds left on the clock at clip number 10 is now heading towards that apex. I take it back. Maybe we did see some smart climbing as she rested <laughs> before hitting this apex of the arch. Oh, and that's her off. Okay, great effort from Annie Bertling. She's happy with that. Yeah, that was her goal. Just go out and have fun. Ten clips, just less than ten minutes. Not bad. Yeah. So, according to my running order, we'll now switch to the men's competition. And our first athlete out will be Young Yon Lee of Korea. But as you may have seen yesterday, things can change here. So when we see Young Yong Lee, then I'll believe that he's coming out. So there is Young Yon Lee. Yeah. Young Korean athlete made finals last week in Rabenstein. It's a lovely sound here in the commentary booth. Cup. So Young Yun Lee gets off to a good start as we get off to an alarm in the tent. Can't be the smoke alarm because that would have gone off about 20 minutes ago. Stopped. Oh, me mental, Kendra. So Young Yun Lee makes it to clip three. Powerful moves for the young Korean. Finished 12th in South Fei. And then made finals, <coughs> excuse me, made finals in Ravenstein. He's moving pretty quickly up this route. So we are getting new information all the time. Um, it looks like the men have 10 minutes as well. Young Yun Lee at clip number five is going to make a big move, big move rather, out and right. Whoa! He just jumped across to that. That was wild. Absolutely wild. Don't think we're going to see as many athletes do that jump. <laughs> we'll definitely see that in the replay. At clip number six now, after that crazy dynamic move,
Great to see such aggression in the athletes. We've got people tuning in all over this morning. We've got Mexico City, we've got Chilliwack, British Columbia. We've got people tuning in from Ireland, Kelowna, BC. We've got Audrey and Jeff here from London. We've got Michigan, Cranbrook. Ema's sister's tuned in. We've got people cheering on for you, Kendra. Love that. We've got people tuning on for Team Blueberry. There is a full host of fans tuned in this morning on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, if you tuned in on the Extreme Channel and on the Olympic Channel, we wish you a very special welcome this morning. You're watching the finals of the third round of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup brought to you by the North Face. My name is Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined this morning by the USA's Kendra Stritch. Excited to be here. And you're watching Young Yon Lee as he reaches down to make clip number nine. Starting to get into the steeper section of the uh, wall here. I think that was the first time he took a moment to shake out. Places that Stein on the little yellow hold. We saw a lot of those yesterday, and it's not a hold that I've seen very much of. That small disc. Yeah, they're a metal disc, and um, they have three um, slight indents, and then usually only one of those has been drilled out completely. So once you're in those, they're a very solid hold. But we've seen them as tops, as side stein pulls, under stein pulls. They can very versatile hold for the route setters. So Yung Yun Lee looking rightwards. As we look at the structure, the climbers on the left are the men and the climbers on the right are the women. Just under half time remaining for Young Young Lee. As I went out and looked at the structure this morning, the first thing I noticed is 17 quick draws on the men's route. It's a lot of quick draws. It is. But he's got half time remaining and he's over halfway. Yeah, he's been moving really well. Good morning to Ref Andronovsky, who's tuned in cheering on the uh, Canadian team. Raf's competed in World Cups himself over the years. Let us know where you're tuned in from, who you're cheering for. Look at that. What an awesome structure. Really does just, just stick out the ground from the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> makes me want to build one at home. Do it. Yung Yun Lee makes clip number 11. And now we can see the next move into that hanging pinnacle off the triangular volume. Really cool sequence as he flicks his right leg over into the figure nine, commits 100% to that move. Must be a drilled hole in that. I would hope there is. <laughs> Otherwise, Yung Yun Lee is psyched. <laughs> Such a cool move and actually quite typical of rock, you know, dry tooling on rock as well. Mm Big swing off the left hand. Look at that. Kicking off the wall to generate some momentum. Places the left hand in that kind of back stein pull. It's sideways. It's underneath. Off that volume. Cranks hard off it at clip number 12. Young Yun Lee moving brilliantly well here. So you can see as you get into the roof here, the clips are much more spaced out. Young Yun Lee with two minutes 55 on the clock, just taking his time, getting each move absolutely precise, flicks over with the fig four on the right arm, matches in onto the tool on the high grip with the left into the figure nine.
cuts loose and kicks in hard. Looking totally comfortable in this terrain, Kendra. He is. It's like they're used to it. He is. <laughs> <laughs> he I was talking about this yesterday. Once Yon Shin and Ima Swigan both just look so at home in this type of structure. But it does look very similar to the structure in Chong Song where we'll be next week. It does. And there's structures in Seoul where they train. They have a lot of roofs and a lot of this big overhanging area. So they spend a lot of time doing these figure four sequences and the big moves in the roof. Well, Young Yon Lee is at clip number 14, and he's got 1 minute 51 on the clock. You can see the top of the women's route just behind him, and we can see the top of the men's route beckoning. Clip number 16 is the one just below the UIAA logo. Clip 17 will be beyond that. 1 minute 30 on the clock. Has he got enough time? I don't think so, but he could gun it here. She says as he shakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could. Yeah, he could, but he's not. <laughs> yeah, when you're up there and you're you're starting to get pumped and um, you know feeling tired and everybody's yelling you go go go. It's like if I could, I would. <laughs> Flicks into the fig nine over the right hand, reaches across with the left. The root set is again showing this three dimensional setting. The climbers going backwards and forwards through this very steep terrain, very easy to get disorientated. That time on the screen, of course, not correct. He has just less than a minute remaining. Kicks into that hanging barrel. Just losing his foot there, but the right foot stuck. Oh, look at that, the rope everywhere. Makes clip number 15. Lots of Canadians tuning in here on Facebook. Time difference, definitely favorable for the Canadian fans. Leslie from Saskatchewan cheering on the Canadians and Emer. Love that. Is Leslie not Noah's mum? Maybe it's his auntie. I think it's his auntie. Or his mum. It's one of them. I've met Leslie, I think. Lovely she is. There is time for Young Yon Lee at clip number 16. That's a brilliant effort from the young Korean. He set a great high point there. Wow. For the first climber of finals. Now, I don't want to play devil's advocate. No, I do. I love playing devil's advocate. Um... Is the route too easy? You, not to take anything away from Young Yun Lee, but technically, you know, as we look at the qualifying positions, your eighth finalist, your last place qualifier, um, who's coming out first, shouldn't be getting that close to the top, right? I don't. Th he. I don't think he climbed well yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because he's very talented. He is. Uh, where did he finish last week? Uh, he's seventh. So not far out, but. Um, but here's the thing. I look at. The names that follow Young Yon Lee, Grabenikov, Tomilov times two, Kuzovlev, Bake, Safdarian, Dengin. All those guys can, will, should get I'm better. way better. You're right. Maybe it is too easy. We'll have to wait and see. The root setters may be nervous, or maybe they know they've done it perfectly. So I think the Canadians are getting excited right now. They should be getting excited because on their screen is our first Canadian athlete in her first ever World Cup final. Inika Raybergen of Canada in bib number 61 joins us. Awesome work from her. And another rise to success. Yes. Someone that's only been competing for a couple of years on the circuit, but in those two years has shot up in ability. She's strong, she's fit, she's athletic, and she's talented. She is. So it's cold out there this morning. It's sunny, but still cold. Somewhere in the region of about minus 10, I've been led to believe. If you are cheering on Inika, then make sure you like and share this broadcast. Hit that share button on Facebook and YouTube. <coughs> make sure everybody gets to see Inika Raybergen in her first ever international final. There is teammate and coach Gordon MacArthur. 
videoing in the car? Now, God has been on the circuit for a long time. Ten years. Yep. Great to see him passing on that knowledge and expertise to some of the younger athletes. Yeah, Inika, Noah, Gord all trained together in Cranbrook, British Columbia. At the Ark Mountain Center, I believe it's called. Yes. Which is the gym God set up last year. What does Inika need to do this morning? I know I mean I know that's kind of a silly question, but you know, literally, it's her first final. What is it that she needs to do this morning to to work with it? Oh tricky move. So we saw any, we'll, we'll talk about what she needs to do in a minute, but we saw any place that side hook, like Inika's doing now, but it does look like a Stein. It must be a weird hold, that. Maybe viewed from below, it looks different. I think we saw those on the warm-up wall. They're just a, a slanted um, pl Korean plastic hold, mm -hmm. and they're, you just have to um, side pull them. Mm -hmm. Well, she's bossed it. She's moved up past clip number two now. So she has to just keep moving. She can't get stuck on any of these these moves or these holds, and I think that's going to be the key, is if she can read all of this correctly, quickly, and keep moving, she can get quite high. She just kind of has to find the flow, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Get into the moves, get into the rhythm of the route, and just keep climbing. Of course, by achieving finals, she's beat her best of her ranking already. Her best of her ranking prior to this, if my memory serves me correctly, is ninth. Let me just pull up my special sheet of numbers. We're working on a strip back setup here in the yurt this morning. We don't have our usual multiple screen setup. We're working old school, well, new school. The old cloud helping me out. Her best result. But Inika Rayburger. No, it says she came eighth in Beijing. Yeah, I was going to say, this isn't her first final. She's her second final. Whoa. China's been good to her. Totally sandbagged myself there. What, wh how was Durango? Durango, she placed ninth. Okay. Okay, so she's got in her finals before. Mm -hmm. I've been talking absolute nonsense. <laughs> It's only her second. This is, uh, it's still new. And as you said, China's been kind to her. She made finals in China back in 2017. The Beijing structure, very different to this one. No arches there. It was a long, basically the same angle all the way. Overhang with lots of volumes interspersed. Yeah, the route setters did an amazing job with all these little volumes to change the angle of the wall and make some great routes. I loved those routes last year. And again, it was Vasily Terekin and Stanislav Lobson. Yep. Really creative guys. Seems you just put a blank space in front of them and they come up with the goods. They have been doing some very late night, early mornings to get these routes ready for us. Challenging conditions. There was a story, in fact, for one of the route setters. They left their holds laid out in the order that they wanted with the drills at the side. The snow machine came, laid 20 centimeters of snow over the equipment. <laughs> they had to dig out the gear. And the drill didn't work anymore. Yeah. They've been working with one drill between two. It's crazy. Hand tightening holds. Everybody on Facebook cheering on Team Canada. So five minutes remain for Inika Raybergen. Just taking care to untangle her foot from the rope. Getting into the steeper terrain. There was Gord saying, come on. Aaron Montgomery of Team USA there as well. This is the only competition that Aaron's joining us for this year. It's great to see him. Great to have him here. And he climbed so well yesterday in semifinals and in qualifiers. He did. Exciting for him to do so well. Nika Rayberg and places the figure four over the right hand into that backhand Stein with the left. Needs to keep that body weight central to the hold, crank up off that pick. We've seen her slow down a lot here. She's going to need to keep moving. Again, this this yellow hold that she's moving up to, that was the the big move hold in uh, semifinals also, and 
It, we saw it shut down quite a few women. Here they've placed it again on a, a big, big move. Inika just struggling first time, hits it, oh, misses it second time. The good spot of that hold is just a little bit higher from where she's been hitting it. Coming up on three minutes, she's just got to get moving here. There we go. Hits it. Third time lucky. Makes clip number eight. Plows on up to clip number nine. Any Bertling climbed before Inika made it to clip number ten. Now we've got some cheering for Team Korea. People tuning in from Seattle. Great to have more and more countries in the finals. It's great. It's so good to have a big mix. We've got Canadians, Koreans, Russians, Iranians, Finns, Irish. Koreans. Did you say Koreans. that? We can My say bad. Koreans twice, though. <laughs> We've got Russians. <laughs> Koreans. Oh, always have Russians. <laughs> Inika now at clip number nine. Big swing, big lock up for that right hand, but hits it first time. Moving well, one minute 48 seconds on the clock. Now, at this point, and he had clip 10 and popped off the next move. If Inika can make the next move and the next clip and keep moving, she'll climb into provisional first place. Lots of people cheering for Inika on social. Into the figure four for the right hand, makes clip number ten. Left hand goes into that intellect hold. Come on, Inika. Matches in on the low grip with the right hand. Taking a second to shake. 60 seconds remain for Inika Raybergen of Canada. Team Blueberry fans cheering her on. <laughs> Left hand in. Another tricky move to go. She skips the hold below the volume there. Smart work. That was the point that we saw Enni Bertling fall. So that should put her into provisional first place for now. 30 seconds remain. She needs to really pick up the pace now. Setting the high point all the time. Come on, Inika. Forget shaking. Start climbing. There we go. Hits the volume. Kicking in. Each kick more labored. The core tired. Legs tired. Arms tired. And head. Come on, Inika. Make clip 11. Five seconds on the clock. Needs this clip. It's not going to happen. But that's a great effort nonetheless, falling just below clip number 11. Time's up. Awesome work there from Inika Rayberg, and I'm sure all the fans at home will be very, very proud of her. Excellent work and a brilliant second finals here in Ho Hu Ha Tu for Inika Rayberg of Canada. Just trying to sort herself out. There we go. Oh, and a cheeky bit of air time. Awesome work, Inika. You can see Rebecca Lewis and Nathan Kutcher as well. Will she be happy with that? She should be. She should be. She'll, of course, want oh. to have gotten higher. <laughs> Such good strength. Awesome power. She wasn't done yet. She wanted to keep climbing there. She was definitely giving it some hard shakes, though, on that move at the volume. So sits provisionally in first place. Of course, there are six more athletes to climb in the women's competition. Seven more in the men's. The next male athlete 
will be the Siberian bear himself, Dmitry Grebenikov. Dmitry got me a present this year, Kendra. For this competition, I mean. I saw that. You see that? Siberian honey. Siberian honey in the shape of a bear. He, and his English is okay. It's not great, but he said, I got you present. I was like, what is it? Siberian honey, make you strong like bear. <laughs> I was like, yes, mate. So hopefully, by eating this honey, I'll grow a set of shoulders like this lad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll get good at climbing one day. And then we'll see you out climbing instead of commentating? Maybe. We'll have to find a new commentator. We can switch places, me and Dimitri. <laughs> I'll be like, eh, sorry, pal. We all have to learn Russian to listen. Yeah. No, that was very nice of him. So yeah. nice and kind of indicative of the atmosphere on the tour as well. You know, people sharing stuff. Yesterday there were people handing out stickers from all the different gyms. You guys were handing out USA climbing stickers. Ima had stuff from Korea. Dimitri just looking for this first move, working out what he needs to do. And I say it every time he climbs, but when they're climbing on their own, it's really hard to get any kind of context. Dimitri is our tallest athlete. He's about six foot four, I think, which is about 180, or nearly 200 centimeters. Is it nearly two meters? He's a big lad. He's tall. I need to do my conversions. Strong. Really strong, and our heaviest athlete as well. Um, Although he's leaned up this year. He has leaned up, but he's still heavier by about 10 kilos to the next athlete. He's just such a big guy. Massive shoulders, big frame, um, but so strong and so nimble. You know, he, that weight that he, he packs behind him is absolutely no hindrance. He climbs so well. And it will be interesting to see how he does this move. Young Yun Lee isn't a short competitor, but Dimitri is definitely much taller. He's just going to reach over. He is, isn't he? <laughs> is he? Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a side pull. That's an intellect, so that's got a metal plate in it. And you do have to stay quiet on those. Come on, cameraman, give us a wide. There we go. Nice. So really strong. Oh, oh, love that. Nice. So it is kind of a dynamic move, whatever happens. The intellect hold being a very poor side, uh, or as a Gaston almost, yep. is going to pop if you lose the tension. And to keep shoulder tension in that position is very difficult. But he held that. Very easily, very smooth. Didn't even miss a beat almost. The route setters seem to have put a pretty good hold there. So that's great. We should have some drama, but hopefully no no one loses out at that point. Look at this. Love that. He's like So he stood on the hold with a, a very, very low undercut with the right hand. I love that. The Russians train those type of moves. They really practice that. That was like the full span. Yeah. Pick to pick. I love that. So far, that's my favorite move now. Very cool. Flicks the right leg over the left hand for the figure four and to make clip number eight. and approaches the steeper section of this arch. Big move with the left hand. So 6.30 left on the clock. He's just going to need to keep moving here through that arch. Teammates cheering on Dimitri. At least they get to hang out in the sun. The athletes are <laughs> climbing in the shade right now. Oh, just struggling with that left hand placement. That's one of those little yellow metal holds. into the intellect hold on the left side of the volume. Let's see if he's able to skip this next hold 
or if he does have to move on to that next rock hold. He's definitely got the span, but it's whether or not that intellect hold has enough on it for him to confidently do it. He seems to think it does. Places the figure four. Look at that. Uh, casual. Mm -hmm. Very confident move. No problem with that one. And it doesn't seem to have messed up his sequence for the next move as well. As he matches in on the tool, just to take a second to shake. You know, the cold definitely is affecting the athlete's hands, causing them to start shaking more, try to get the blood back into their hands. Not quite as cold this morning as it has been, but still in the region of minus 10 degrees Celsius. So it's certainly not warm. No. <laughs> So it looked like he was maybe trying to skip another move, but he's having to place... Oh, look at that! What a move! Awesome sequence as he crosses under himself with the undercut to then reach up for the hold by clip number 11. Solid clip. And now we'll see him reach out with his right hand to the hanging pinnacle. Four minutes on the clock. A little bit slower than Young Yon Lee. Big reach with the right hand into the Stein on the volume. The Russians also practice a lot in this terrain. They're experts at the figure four, figure nine, how to get around the rope and everything in the roofs. So. Dimitri should be able to cruise this section. <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> you climbed the whole route. And Yung Yun Lee cruised this move. He he really did. He moved so confidently between this Stein and that next move. It, he didn't skip a beat. Whereas we've seen. Grubenikov lose a few seconds here, almost a minute behind. There it is. Clip 13. Got to move on to the bottom of the next volume. So he's got the left leg over the left hand for the figure nine. Two minutes remain. Lots of people tuned in on YouTube as well. Henry's tuned in deciding whether to watch ABS Nationals or the World Cup Final. I don't know which I'd pick. Come on. World Cup Final. So these three-dimensional routes, the athletes really have to uh, pay attention during route preview to make sure they see all of the holds. We had that happen in Durango last year. The athletes hadn't seen one of the holds in the finals at the top and caused some stress and big moves. Grubenikov on the underside of that volume at clip number 14. 54 seconds remaining. Keeping that pace now as he reaches out with the right hand. That looks awkward. And this is where being big can sometimes be a disadvantage, having to fit into that small space. Needs that clip. Oh, 
是的。好的。Now can he get the next hold here before he runs out of time? Oh yeah! Here we go. So that's going to put him into a provisional first place. Dmitry, Russia. Awesome work from Dmitry Grabenikov, who climbs his way into a provisional first place, of course. As we mentioned, we've got a lot of strong athletes to come. And with another high point but no top, maybe the route setters have got it just about right. We can expect a much faster pace from the likes of Safdarian and Dengin. Have to wait and see how it pans out. Mehdi Panavar there, who's been helping with the route setting. And there's a stuck axe. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to get that down here. We'll have to wait and see if the climber Nadia Galimova is allowed to start. It looks like she's going to be while they work out how to retrieve that axe. Nadia setting a good pace here. Galimova took gold medal last week in the speed competition at Ravenstein. It was her first ever gold medal in any competition, uh, or any rather any lead World Cup competition. Sounds like someone's just having a little building site job give you shout outs when we can lots of fans tuned in from Canada and North America we've got a lot of folks tuned in from Korea as well some Russians and some Iranians it's great to have you all on board let us know where you're tuned in from and who you're supporting Nadia you Galyamova now at clip number four on that tenuous left hook Marianne Philip over there just missed out on finals. She's made every other final of the season so far. That's strong underclang. And this is one thing that we talk about with Nadia Galyamova is her 
strength. <laughs> She's one of the strongest athletes on the circuit. Um, Dengin, Alexi Dengin, who was comp uh, comparing, commentating with me last week, was saying that she's easily as strong as most of the guys, mm. but just climbs too slow. Um, she has a very slow and measured style, which causes her problems. But after her first gold in the speed comp in Rabenstein last week, we certainly can't question her pace anymore. Maybe we'll see her first lead goal. That would be exciting. Shaking in the Stein there with five minutes to go at clip number five. Six is made. She's just taking a second. She's got to keep moving. Easily up to the hold on the blue NEC volume with the left hand. Not quite finding the placement, but in that lock, so strong. Exactly. That's the strength you were just talking about. Just able to pull up into that and hang out while she finds the good spot on that next hold. And it's quite deceptive, really, how hard that type of move is to hold for such a long time because she makes it look so easy. She does. The triceps engaged, the biceps engaged, the core's engaged, is pushing off her feet. The pectoral is like totally wrecked. And then the left hand is looking to engage as well. She's just so solid. And yet makes it look like nothing. Fig four over the left hand as she reaches up with the right. Another tricky move here. The two prior previous competitors, rather, Inika Rayberg and, and Enni Bertling, both finding that move much easier, but both significantly taller. Still no trouble for Galliamova as she takes the tool with the left checking the hold to make clip number seven fighting the cold hands I think here yeah still too low on the route for someone like Galliamova to be pumped yeah look at that she's breathing onto her hands how much of a difference does it make having the cold hands it, it's significant and drastic and and all the athletes are experienced and in, in warm-up they're trying to get warm enough but not too warm and keep the hands warm and the blood blood flowing but we do end up standing around a bit just before you're climbing so it's hard to stay warm enough and then once once you start climbing you've got your hands above your head no new blood is really flowing into them and and there's really not a way to to mitigate this wrists exposed as well you're gonna get cold hands with exposed wrists of course these big reaches it's hard to get sleeves long enough yes <laughs> certainly ones that don't get in the way Gallium over moving between that left hand backhand switching it to a right hand grip as well she's gonna clip with the right maybe no she's gonna match interesting wasn't expecting that. Uh, she obviously didn't like where she had the hold. Saw her reach up with her hand and feel around. Two minutes, ten seconds on the clock. She's definitely behind the pace here. A minute behind Inika Rehbergen's pace, in fact. Of course, Inika got the provisional high point. There's the clip, clip eight. Good morning to Jeff, who's tuned in to watch Ema McSwigan. He's got a long wait because Ema qualified in second place yesterday, topping the route. So she'll be out as the penultimate athlete in the women's comp. We're currently in the third of eight. Another big move here to that yellow hold that we saw in the women's semi final yesterday. One minute 22 on the clock. The cold seeming to be getting the better of Naji Gallium over here. Hits it second time. Reaches across with the right. Adjusts that body position. Keeps the center of gravity below the hold. 
as she approaches the steepest section of the route now. 50 seconds on the clock as Galliamovin makes clip number nine. She's really got to move here to be able to get the new high point. I don't think she's got a chance, personally. She'd have to do something pretty spectacular. Ray Bergen falling off at clip 11 without the clip. Yeah, I think she's going to be lucky. How far away is clip 10? We've got a couple moves. 15 seconds. Gallimova places the right tool, kicks in quickly, reaches over to that intellect hole with the... Oh, she's off! Just moving a little too fast there for those intellect holds. Well, and the hands are It looked are like cold. a hands and yep. <laughs> yeah. I She just knew she needed to touch the next hold, try to take it. Any of those extra moves at the end, you get some fractional points for touching the next hold or moving on to the next hold. I really so. feel like that was the first athlete that really the cold got the better of her. There we can see Galliamova blowing into her hands. Small athlete, small frame. No body fat. Yeah. <laughs> She's definitely going to be feeling that. What do you call them? Screaming barfies? Yes. She's going to have the screaming barfies now. We call them hot aches. Okay. <laughs> we have slightly less dramatic names. <laughs> but I think it's a good adjective, screaming but I mean, that's yes. exactly oh. what they are. You scream and you want to be sick. Yeah. Mm. Now, someone who I've never seen scream <laughs> or want to be sick uh, is Maxim Tomilov. Powerhouse of the... Russian climbing scene, powerhouse of the international climbing scene. More world titles to his name than anyone else on the circuit. The only person that comes close is Xiong Park, and of course he's taken a year out this year. But we will be seeing him next week, rumour has it, in Chongsong. He's registered, he's on the start list. You see that intellect hold there, the metal plate. Oh, look at that. No pick popping there, is there? No. So <laughs> strong. That guy's got shoulders of steel. <laughs> Moves up confidently to make the clip. <laughs> and let's see if he does it the same way as Grubenikov. 25 seconds ahead of Grubenikov. <laughs> It's basically a mantle list. Yeah. It's the dry tool and equivalent of a mantle. Well, you have the choice to either do the dynamic stand up here like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> or do With it the Grabenikov way. Or the Grabenikov way, stand which up. I love. <laughs> Such a beast. So cool. To be fair, if I had leg muscles that big, I'd be doing that on yeah. every move. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little inefficient. Nah, I don't care. It looks so cool. <laughs> Style first. <laughs> Maxim Tomilov into the figure nine over the right hand on the apex of that blue volume. Looking for the position on that right hand. There it is. A little bit more of a side pull than he thought it was, maybe. Clip nine, 6.55 left. 35 seconds ahead of the time set by Grabenikov, who was definitely slower than Young Yon Lee. Good look at those metal holds. The markings around that hold are from the route setters because they preset these routes and then took them down, and then they pretty quickly have to put them back up, so they mark the location and the orientation of the holds. And that's because the moves are tested, right? So they know that the move works, they know that the position works, so as long as they reset it exactly as it started, then theoretically, it should still work. <laughs> and at this level, we don't see very mis many mistakes with the route setting like that. And again, Tomilov opting to skip the move as Grabenikov did. The Russians may be sharing the beta there. 
不到一半的时间，罚了呃一大半的线路。Reaches up with the right hand. 没错。Goes for the match with the left into the fig nine. And this is where we saw Grabenikov doing that crazy undercut crossover move. Not necessary for Maxim Tomilov, who just fig fours and fig nines his way through that sequence and makes clip number 11 with the left. Easy. It's interesting to see in a finals route that the athletes have options mm -hmm. on how to climb this. We often see that in a, a qualifier's route, but it's neat to see that the athletes will see different techniques. Look at the pace on Maxim Tominov. Five minutes remaining on the clock as he approaches clip number 12, 17 being the top. Big reach with the right hand hits that no problem where it caused Grabenikov a few issues. Tomilov unfazed by the span on that move. Reaches across with the right hand into the fig nine. So he's now on the edge of that volume between clip 13 and 14. Kicking into the underside with the left to make that clip. He is cruising this section. He has plenty of time to make top, I think, at this pace. Three minutes 40 on the clock. Just taking a second to shake in the most peculiar of terrain to do so, <laughs> but that just goes to show how good he's feeling. The cold seemingly not bothering him. Now he's moving on to this um, feature that moves. We need a cool name for it, for the Hanging Pentagon. The Hanging God. That's not what it's called. <laughs> I entertain myself though, and that's the important thing. Maxim Tominov reaching across himself again to make clip number 15. We need somebody to come up with a cool name for that. Yes, that's the challenge. If you are tuned in on Facebook or YouTube, why not come up with a name for the Hanging Pentagon? That uh, There's probably a better name for it because it's not a pentagon, only the end's a pentagon. What's the three-dimensional pentagon called? You mean like a pentagoid or something? Somebody... Google that yeah, for yeah. us. Come on, guys. Join in. <laughs> Clip number 16, beckoning for Maxim Tomilov with 2 minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. Into that figure four with the left leg over the right hand, makes clip number 16. The top is very close now with 1 minute 57 seconds on the clock. Davai Maxim. Heading up onto the head wall. First climber to make it onto this feature of the structure. So 120, one more clip, three more holds. And so now we'll see the signature Tomilov pace kick in. One minute remaining, just over a minute. Tomilov now inching further and further up that wall. 
in any second as the camera pans up you'll see that final clip Tomilov knows that all he needs to do is stay composed and keep moving kicks in with that final intellect hold and we can see the final hanging bollard needs to go all the way around to the other side to make the top and the clip into the figure nine 35 seconds to go for Maxim Tomilov switches to the fig four look at this he's not rushing he knows that he can do it spin in the box look at that very smart 19 seconds remain oh he's gonna struggle to clip though this is gonna be a oh, brutal Kenga. clip he's got 10 seconds to go maxim tomilov having all sorts of trouble just trying to get the rope into the right position this is a heartbreaker with five seconds to go tomilov is not going to be able to get it in in time zero tomilov what a heartbreaker maxim tomilov times out matched on the hold but with no top kendra ouch Oh! oh, and the massive whipper. There's Aeroflot, the big finish. Russia. The wow. Russians very impressed. There's Katya Fyaktistova, Nikolai... Oh, no, that's not Nikolai. He's in the isolation. Kartashev, Leonid Malik, all the guys cheering him on. We'll take a look at that action again. I mean, to, to just talk about that performance, he was very composed from start to finish. Didn't look phased by any of the moves. And then here, the barrel. Wow, what a fall. The barrel re rotating just a little too much. He even spun it with his hand. Yeah, I think he was uh, getting, he was pumped at that point. His hands are starting to come off those tools. He definitely knows that the other guys are capable of topping that. Yep. And so it looks like the crux of that route will be getting to the barrel with enough time and enough in the bank to make the clip. Yeah. The clip. Figuring the out how to make that clip. Similar to the finals in Rabenstein in 2016. Uh, early 2017. It was the 16-17 season where the podium positions were decided by the final barrel. The guys swinging round on the barrel. And uh, Janusz Zvolchak, who took the gold medal, bossed it because he anticipated that and spun the barrel before he got on it. Great. Brilliant moves. Masha Edler to climb now on the women's route. Masha Edler in bib number 73 at clip number four. <laughs> Masha Edler made finals last week in Rabenstein as well. Lots of questions coming in, lots of people watching. Julius Vigo Olason says, why have I never been notified of this sport? Well, that's a good question. Doesn't matter why, because you found it now. Tim Van Drie is asking, is this an element in the Olympic Games? Well, it's not an element in the Olympic Games yet. Uh, the UIAA, which is the governing body of the Ice Climbing World Cup, are hopeful that it will be selected as part of the 2022 Winter Games. It was supposed to be a showcase at this year's Winter Games in Pyeongchang, but due to various political reasons and funding reasons, it didn't happen. Lots of people coming in with suggestions for the name of that hanging pentagon on the route. We've got, wow, there's so many good ones. Starting us off, we've got the chandelier, we've got the dangle gone, we've got cliffhanger, the floaty pen, the pentaprism, the dangling doohickey. That's got to be an American one. I can just imagine Americans say, the power penta. That guy nailed it. The chandelier. Horcrux. Bit of a Harry Potter fit. Hangy McHang face. <laughs> yes. The death gone. Very extreme. Penta neck. Hanging polyhedron. We've got some great ones. The cheeky dangler. Definitely one of my favorites so far. The yurtsicle from Carl Ray Bergen themed there i'm into that the punch bag there's all sorts here these are great names if you have a name for that hanging pentagon 
There you can see it in the center of the route. Then do send it to us. The Pentagon, some great <laughs> names. If you've got an idea for the name of that hanging Pentagon, then we'd love to hear it. Marsha Edler on clip number seven doesn't have to use the chandelier or the death gun. Her route finishes just before it. 15 clips for the women, and with four minutes and 37 seconds on the clock, she's just below halfway, with over half of the time elapsed. Dengin, her coach, with me last week in commentary, said that Masha is definitely strong enough to podium in these finals, but just needs to find a little bit more pace. Hopefully, she won't fall short of the pace again today. We'll try and keep you up to date with that pace as it goes. There you go. She's actually... Way ahead of the pace so far. 1 minute 23 seconds ahead of Inika Rehbergen, who sits at the moment in provisional first place. Makes clip number nine into that powerful backhand Stein. And she's moving really well here, Kendra. She is. I, I hope she can keep this pace. I think this next section is going to make a... Well, this will be the determining, if she can hold that pace through these bigger moves. Reaches up to make clip number 10. So she's now matched Inika's clipping high point. And as she approaches clip number 11, she will match the high point of Inika Rehbergen. Raybergen had the next hold that you can see just in the top left of the screen, but didn't have the clip. Masha just needs the clip to take the high point and provisional first place. Still with plenty of time on the clock here. Okay, has the hold. And as that left axe releases, she'll match Raybergen's high point. There we go. Over two minutes remaining for Edler, who's going to make that clip. And that now puts Maria Edler of Russia into provisional first place. We say provisional because there's still four more athletes to climb. Fig nine over the left hand for Edler. Places that Stein behind her in the steep section. Powerful kicks. Staying tight in the court. Kendra, how hard is it to keep the front points in the wall when the angle's that steep? Well, it does take a lot of core and hip and um, leg strength there. But the, the harder thing is getting them back into the wall when you lose it. Uh -huh. So if you can keep your feet up there, What's keep up? them in a figure four. Oh, figure she's nine. off. Sorry to cut you off That's there. That's all right. That was dramatic. It was dramatic. Oh, she's cold as well. Look at that. Screaming barfies for sure. So let's see that again. Left hand was good. She just lost the grip on the left hand. Yeah. You know it's cold when the Russians are suffering. <laughs> We're going to see temperatures of about minus 13 Kirov in just a couple of weeks' time. That competition is so much later in the season, and it's still so <laughs> cold up there. I, th I say we have it in January. It's just a joke. It would be really cold. It has been in January one year. I remember reading about that one. I was not there. So, on the screen, Alexei Tomilov. We're flying through these athletes now. Bib 008, older brother of Maxim Tomilov. He's had a really good season so far. Placed fourth in Sazfe and second last week in Rabenstein. Now, 
Someone asking here on Facebook, what kind of exercises do these people do? What kind of exercises do these people do? A lot of them just do a lot of this type of climbing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see the cross training though. For example, Katia Fiatistova is a swimmer. Mm -hmm. Alexei does mixed martial arts. So they all do some different uh, sport, or not all, but a lot of them do different sports as well to stay fit. I mean, if you're doing mixed martial arts, you're going to be very fit. A lot of full body workouts in those. Yeah, I think it's to stay fit, but also to counteract the the climbing. Uh -huh. You know, if you're using the same muscles all the time and only using those. Yeah. Good word. <laughs> college study and sport in college paid off. Remembering that word. <laughs> So some of the athletes do some lifting too and plyometrics and all sorts of different things. What's your big training when you're not climbing? Uh, I actually do more lifting than I do climbing because we don't have any structures and we don't have any gyms that we can dry tool in. So my main training is lifting. Hmm. Juan Andres Ruiz says, ouch, minus 13. No, minus 30, three zero, 30. Yeah. It's not that cold. In Kirov? Oh, in Kirov, It's yes. going to be minus 30. Yes. Yeah. No, here it's about minus 10. Um, the warmest it's been yet. The temperature's actually a little bit warmer. Oh, yes! Tomilov does the stand-up move. What a <laughs> hero. Love that. Um, but there's a slight breeze, which brings that temperature down dramatically. It feels so cold with the wind. Yeah, the wind is the real killer here. What would be really bad is if you got really, really hot and then had to go outside. <laughs> you, <laughs> so we're just not going outside, right? Oh, just uh, to give you some context there, Kendra and I, along with our uh, graphics man, the man behind all these wonderful graphics that you see on the screen, Rito, are in a broadcast yurt along with about 10 Chinese broadcasters uh, with a very, very large coal-burning stove less than a foot away from us. It has no off button. There's no off button and there's a hell of a lot of coal on there. So uh, it's hot. I've been in saunas that aren't as hot as this. Fact. Agreed. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Rather be warm than cold. It's brutal out there. Um, I said that this morning, but I may take that back. <laughs> it's definitely hot. Uh, I am sat shirtless. Nice little mental imagery for you there. If it's the morning where you are, enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Mopping myself down with a little travel towel. Alexei Tomilov reaching into the underside of that left hold. Small metal disc. Slightly behind his brother's pace. There's Dmitry Gabenikov. He knows that all of the guys to come can climb this faster. He's hoping maybe his climb will hold on to a podium position, but I don't think so. Flicks the left leg over the... It's not his left leg, is it? This is his right leg, Kendra. <laughs> he flicks his right leg over his left hand to make clip number 10. Now, Alexei has used that stone hold. Maxim and Dimitri both skipped it. He's going to skip it here. <laughs> He's like, why'd I do that? <laughs> Retreat. I'm not quite sure what the route setters were thinking there. And these other sequences where we see two holds that are close together, there's um, an obvious reason. Like this upcoming one, people will go to the top hold. It's a you take it from the top, and then the next one down is an under, which lets you leverage and get real high to go to the next hold. But um, those double ones just down and left of him that he passed. I'm not sure what the intention was. Maybe it's just a red herring. Yeah, a decoy hold. That's actually what I said this morning. Did you? I was like, looks like there might be a few decoy holds. So people tuning in to cheer on Dengin and Edler, no doubt they're from Moscow. Over on YouTube, we've got people tuning in from Iran. We've got Montreal, Wisconsin, USA. Jennifer Limbach, good morning. Chris Pina is tuned in to cheer on Noah. Sean Salmon tuning in from Ireland to cheer on Ema McSwiggan. Now he's moving onto that stalag tight. Carl Smith suggests that we call the hanging pentagon the dingling. 
Uh, I don't think that one's, my, that one's not my favorite yet. No. Deborah Sand is asking us how long the climbers get to preview the route. It's the same amount of time that they get to climb it. So in this case, it was 10 minutes. But that's after the judges do their ex explanation and everything. So they usually get a few minutes more. During that time, everybody's most athletes are making a drawing of the route and then and also discussing with each other how how they're going to move through the route. Alexi Tomilov there cutting loose. Totally comfortable. No problem at all for him to be hanging off just the one axe. Very confident movement. Three minutes 42 left on the clock for him as he approaches the final and steepest section on this route. Once he gets to the hanging pentalogue, I feel like that's what it's going to be called. The pentalogue. Pentalogue really yeah. works for me. You know, it's got to roll off the tongue. Uh, as he gets towards that, then he does have one final head wall to go. Three minutes 21 on the clock. He's 47 seconds behind his brother. Maxim Tomilov, the current high point holder. Provisional first place. He's either going to have to pull something spectacular out of the bag here, or he's going to fall behind and not be in with a chance of taking a gold. 14 clip made for Alexei Tomilov in the figure nine position. Back to the fig four over that left hand as he reaches down to the other side of that volume. A lot of people from the US just turned in. Pennsylvania, Alabama, New Hampshire, is well, Israel, not the US. That's not in the US. Texas, Oregon. Wow, lots of Americans. I know. Love that. Good morning to all of our American fans. It's great to have so many of you on board. I know that normally our competitions don't fall favorable with broadcast times for you guys, but it's wonderful to see that you have tuned in now that they have. The hanging pentagon of doom. <laughs> Just not, it doesn't come off quickly. <laughs> I like it has that to be one, quick. Though. That could be its full name. <laughs> and we'll call it the pentalog for short. Tommy Love kicking into the pentalog as he reaches across with the left to match in, flicks the right leg over into the fig four. He needs to take care not to be skipping these clips. The swinging pentalogue of doom. Wow, they just get that, more and more extravagant. That was mine. Oh, that was yours, Kendra. <laughs> right. <laughs> A bit awkward. <laughs> Reaches back to make clip number 15. Now, interestingly, if he'd have made one more move and had to climb down, that would have counted as a skip clip. Correct, and he would be called off. But he didn't. He's a smart guy. He knows the rules. It was a smart clip, meaning there was no drag in the system for him to make it. Flicks into the figure nine. And we make reference to that back clipping because, of course, that was what fell foul for Nikolai Primorov in Saz Fate. Oh, the Americans just continue to tune in here. Good morning from in Inner Mongolia. Dmitry Grabenikov cheering on his teammate. 52 seconds remain for Alexei Tomilov, who now sits in second place behind his brother. Marines in North Carolina tuning in. Twenty-seven seconds remaining for Alexei Tomilov as he gets to the last section of the route. Let's see where he can set his high point. Reaches up with the left hand. And the right, picking up that pace now. He's going to hit that barrel. Oh. Drops his axe. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to win this, but let's put a show on. Two tickets to the gun show, and Alexei Tomilov is hosting. Amazing work from the Russian. No top, but very close. And he now sits in second place behind his brother, Maxim Tomilov. We'll go over to the women's competition for another Russian climate. We'll be watching Ekaterina Vlasova any second. He looks out of breath, but he doesn't look cold. 
No, he doesn't. Tasmania, Australia. Good tuning morning. In. So we have a question here. What's the difference between figure four and figure nine? Figure four, you're putting right leg over the left arm or the left leg over the right arm. Figure nine is right leg over right arm or left leg over left arm. Katarina Vlasova at clip number five. Finished joint 17th in Sazfe. Made finals last week in Rabenstein. Finished just outside of a podium position. Podium once again dominated by Wun Xiong Shin, Maria Talokanina, and Hanare Song. Missing from this competition is Hannah Ray. Yeah, I had a chat with her at Rabenstein, and she said that she was decided not to come here. It's the Korean Championships this weekend, and next weekend, of course, is the Cheongsong round. And for her, she wanted to rest. She knew that this one would be a tiring one with the conditions, and she wants to take the win in her home competition. She did it last year, she definitely wants it this year. I think definitely another weekend on the home structure right before the World Cup next week will make a difference for her. Vlasov ahead of Edler by 27 seconds. We've got another question here. What are the axes made out of? It's a great question. Plastic? No. Carbon fiber. I was going to say cast iron. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're generally a couple of different materials, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Aluminum and uh, carbon fiber are the most common of materials for these axes. We want to have them pretty light, so that's why those materials are chosen. From you non-American viewers, that's aluminium. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and then the picks, the Krukanogi picks, famously made from tank steel. Russian tank steel. There's also a, a Polish athlete making picks for the competitions. What are they made from? Steel. Love that. <laughs> I think all of the picks Polish are Polish tank steel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the picks are, the reason that athletes are using specific competition picks is, one, they're generally harder than the uh, stock picks for tools so that uh, they last longer and they don't dull as quickly. But um, also the, the shape is different to accommodate the holds that we use and especially the um, intellects, the metal plates with holes in them. They're a more aggressive shape, more downturned. More downturned and then with that, a bigger beak with no teeth at the front. Because mm -hmm. of course they're not placed into ice or rarely placed into ice. Vlasova just having a little bit of trouble with this move at clip number nine. It is a big one up with the right hand. Hits it eventually. People tuning in from Abu Dhabi. And Sweden. Lots of people saying, why isn't this an Olympic sport? It's a good question. Everybody should send that question to the IOC. <laughs> Katarina Vlasova moving well now. She had a great round in Ravenstein last week. We'll be looking to repeat that form this week, if not better. She sits provisionally in fourth. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Ho Hu Ho Tu in Inner Mongolia, autonomous region of China. You're watching the men's and women's lead finals. My name is Liam Lonsdale, and you are also listening to co commentator today, American athlete Kendra Stritch. You can join in the conversation on social media using a particular hashtag, which is about to pop up on your screen. 
like that. Use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. You can use that on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can contact me directly using at Liam Lonsdale as well, as you saw. Those are the provisional standings. Vlasova sits in second with clip number 11, ahead of Ray Bergen in third. Still three more athletes to climb after Vlasova. Maria Tolokanina, Ima McSwigan, and Wunsyon Shin. Big reach down and a long clip for Vlasova. There it is, clip number 12. Into the fig four, over the left hand, another big reach with one minute 17 on the clock. Hits it no problem at all. That was the point that we saw Maria Edler fall. So Vlasova now goes into first place. Lots of people asking what the walls are made of. It is plywood. And they're also asking if it makes a difference, the, the holes from each competitor's crampons for the other competitors. It doesn't. Most of the competitions use the plywood for multiple years. So it eventually breaks down. But um, just from one competition, it doesn't make a difference for the later athletes. Clip 13 made for Ekaterina Vlasova. And we see her moving into this volume at clip 13. Similar move to that of which we saw in the men's semi-final yesterday. Kicks into the volume and does a full 180 degree turn on that hold. Really nice movement. Great comp. Oh, she's off. That was close. Normally we would expect to see the athletes hold moves like that. Oh, she's carrying from the axe. She knows it's coming down. It's not down. Definitely don't want to be below that. What I was about to say was we could sometimes expect the athletes to hold those falls. She almost held it, but with the cold hands, it's just so much harder to do. Great effort, nonetheless, from Ekaterina Vlasova of Russia, falling off at clip 14. She'll be happy with that, sitting in a provisional first. Absolutely. There's the axe. Nikolai Kuzovlev jumping across there in this finals route of the Men's Ice Climbing World Cup. This is the third final of the season. Rounds previously in Sazfe, Switzerland, and Rabenstein, Sudtirol. If this is the first time watching a World Cup ice climbing competition, then a very warm welcome. You can ask questions using the chat box and the comment box on YouTube and Facebook. We'll do our best to monitor that as and when we can. We'll do our best to answer those questions. I'm joined this morning by American athlete Kendra Stritch, who made semi-finals here in the league competition yesterday. It was really fun. It looked really fun. There's clip number eight. Because of left, locked in over that left leg, left hand rather. Just trying to check the position, switches it to a right leg instead. Back to a left. Big reach with the right hand. Interesting that it's causing him issues. It caused Maxim Tomilov issues, but Young Yon Lee and Dmitry Grubenikov, no problem at all. Yeah. Just misreading where the good spot is on the hold. But then picks up the pace. Kuzov left with a real signature aggressive style. He's very, very fast. I distinctly remember back in Champagny last year at the World Championships, and I mentioned this in one of the other competitions, the podium was decided by tops. Um, Hyung Park won with a top in the fastest time. Second place went to Yannick Latard, who was second with the second fastest time. And Kuzov left was way faster than them both, like significantly faster, but just popped off below the top. If he'd have topped, he would have been the world champion. And he knew that, and he was very frustrated. But my point being, with those two guys notoriously fast and him faster, you can expect to see some very quick moves here. And he used the stone hold that the other guys skipped. And he used it first. Yeah. And so that that's Perhaps probably that's how it's set. yeah. 
but we saw those earlier athletes just be comfortable enough to move straight into the intellect. We did, but we also saw them 12 seconds slower at the best, 48 seconds for Dmitry Gravenikov. So perhaps using that is a quicker way. Yeah, great point. And we'll see if he's, he's gonna skip that undercling. That undercling move that we saw Dimitri do just takes a lot of power, which Dimitri had no problem with. But some of these other athletes want to conserve that power, or they're moving faster also, so they just choose to go into that figure four. Just takes a second to shake at clip number 11. <coughs> 25 seconds ahead of the pace, Nikolai Kuzovlev of Russia. Based out of two men in Russia. Same place as Yulia Kaplina, World, uh, World Cup winning speed climber in the IFSC circuit. On that stalag tight. Big reach with the left hand hits that, no problem. Now they're retrieving <laughs> the axe that's Let's watch still that. up there. There's the climbing, that's what we're here to see. If you did ask how they retrieve the axe, then you know. Vasily Terekin, the root setter, sits on a rope and pokes it with a big pole. <laughs> Technical term. The pole poke. There it is. Clip number 13 made for Nikolai Kuzovlev. 15 seconds ahead of the pace. Is that enough time for him to hit that barrel and clip? Only if he gets it the first time. So smooth into that hanging fig four. Taking that swing very casually, all in his stride. Makes clip 14. Moving on to the back side of that volume. He's taking an opportunity. Each move here, he's just doing one shake. Second shake there and then move on. Reaches across with the right hand onto the pentalog. We asked you guys before to come up with a name for that hanging feature. It has to be a name that rolls off the tongue. So far, pentalog is my favorite. Thanks to George Joseph in Arizona for coming up with that one. Four seconds ahead of the pace now, taking a moment to shake. And you can see that top sign is actually for the women's route. Men's route climbs above as you see that clip just in the top of the screen on that last shot. Small placement for that left hand. Kuzovlev hits it very precisely, first time. Flicking into the fig four over the right hand to make clip number 16. 12 seconds ahead of Tomilov's pace, and that's Maxim Tomilov. Alexei Tomilov just behind him. Kuzovlev much smaller than the other two, fitting into that space really nicely. Into the Stein, fully horizontal, shaking out to make that big move up and left. There it is. Oof, didn't have that well at all. Comes back down to readjust, smart move. Sometimes we see the athletes just rolling with it. That would have been a bad choice in that situation. Bit of pick shift as well there. The head of the axe shaking around. 
Hits it second time, much better. Kicks in hard. Another big and powerful move to come. Into the fig four over the left leg. Solid into that right hand. He's running out of time here. He's got to really punch it. I mean, you can see that that is the last hold. But as we saw with Maxim Tomilov, that barrel rotates something rotten. So he's got to hit it and get into a good position to then match and make the clip all within 30 seconds. Kendra, I don't think he's got enough time. I don't think so either. Carter Chef, gold medalist and world champion in speed, telling him he needs to hurry up. Oh no, he dropped his axe! Oh, what a nightmare! Oh, that is not what he wanted. Nikolai Kuzovlev will be tied with Alexei Tomilov. Takes a nice fall. No top for Nikolai Kuzovlev. Wow. Maxim Tomilov still sits in provisional first place. What happened there? He had the tool over his shoulder. That was a bad move. Oh, dear. It, he thought it was the other way around, but he just put it on there and it fell off straight away. Oh, Nikolai. So close, yet so far. Sticking with the Russian athletes. We've had seven, sorry, eight consecutive Russian athletes here. They filled up the middle of that table. It's Maria Tolokonina. She's our third from last female competitor. We still have Ema McSwiggan of Ireland and Wunsyon Shin of Korea to climb in the ladies' comp. In the men's competition, we've got Noah Bake of Canada, Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran, and Alexei Dengin of Russia. Look at this pace, very typical of Maria to come out fast. I don't call her the pocket rocket for nothing. <laughs> she's one of our shortest female competitors, but she's also one of our fastest. She has gold medals in lead and speed. She's got world championship titles in both. Not at the moment. No. Nope. She's joint world champion in speed, but not lead. Munshan Shin's the world champion in the great final lineup. World champions, gold medalists. A few newer climbers. It's great. Love it. We get a big shout out to the root setters. Vasily Terekin and Stanislav Lobzov of Russia. They were supported by Mehdi Panova of Iran. I think one of the things that impresses me the most about Masha is how tough she is. She just seems unfazed by everything. There's a story about her once uh, cutting a leg in a speed final and having it stitched on a table and then still competing in lead finals. I mean, she's tough. She's gnarly. Proper Russian mentality. Her father is actually the president of the jury of the judges here in China at the moment. Pavel Shabalin. Masha in her unmarried life was called Masha Shabalina instead of Tolokanina. And look at that. A minute and nine seconds faster than our previous fastest Masha Edler. Almost two minutes faster than Inika Raybergen, who currently sits in third place. Welcome our female competitor Maria representing Russia. 那么在她后面还有两位选手没有出场, Maria的是今天八位女子选手里面倒数第三位出场的选手。大家也是可以感觉到我们的比赛确实是越来越精彩了。One minute thirteen seconds ahead of the pace now.我们看到还有三位选手分别来自加拿大。Cruising that move up with the left hand, 
really easily hitting that. We've seen that trouble a lot of the athletes, but Tolokanina unfazed by the length of that move. She has so much experience, just wealth of knowledge to be able to hit those holds and know how to do the body positioning the first time. If you're wondering what that sound is, the fire is being filled up with more coal, because of course it's not hot enough in the broadcast yet already. <laughs> I have to laugh, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's laugh or cry at this point, guys. <laughs> oh dear. We will know how hot for its extremes. Extreme heat and extreme cold. Maria Tolkanina easily clipping number 10. Creeping towards Inika Raybergen's high point. Just has to make clip 11 to push Inika down into a fourth position. Mm. So much time left compared to the other athletes. A whole one minute, 37 seconds at clip 10, faster than the others. Have you ever seen a broken pick during the competition? Uh, I've seen one broken pick, but i tell you what I've never seen until yesterday. A broken front point. Yeah. <laughs> Noah Bake climbing about 90% of his route with a broken crampon. People um, were wondering why he was kicking So did so Dennis. Hard. Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, his, his bolt well, came his off. bolt came out, yeah. yeah. So we had two yesterday, but... Yeah, I d people, we just don't break our picks in this competition. We don't see it happen. Flicks into the figure nine. Reaches back into that red hold. He's now past Inika Raybergen's high point. Any medal hopes for Inika are now over. Still, awesome performance from her. Some comments about this being mesmerizing. It truly is to watch a talented athlete like this float up or out. In both competitions, we've got phenomenal athletes. Some sublime climbing. And with the likes of Bake, Saftarian and Dengin, McSwiggan and Shin still to go, things are only going to get more interesting. Big reach with the right hand for Maria Tolokanina, who hits it no problem. Kicks into the fig nine. Switches to the four. Reaches back to make clip 12. Look at that. Smart clipping. Gets the swing going. That slowed her down a bit. <laughs> She's still 121 ahead, though. It did slow her down. And let's have a look at this clip. 13. She's about a year ahead of Lazava now. Look at that. Two minutes entirely. She's going to reach back into that Stein. Takes it as a backhand. Goes 180 degrees with the feet. And if she can take this next hold and hold the position, she will go ahead of Lazava. Another Stein. Again, kind of as a backhand, just by the orientation. Although she's front onto it, the way she's traveling is the opposite direction. Climbing downhill almost at this point. The perspective's actually a little bit of an optical illusion because she's climbing away from us. The wall is horizontal at this position. Into first place. And look at that. One minute 42 on the clock. The next clip is the top. I don't want to jinx her, Kendra, but she's looking pretty solid. She is. Flicks in. Oh, whoa, nice hold there by Maria Telekanina, who looked like she was off, oh, but man. caught herself on one hand, managed to get the left hand onto it, matched in. So composed. She doesn't even look phased. Kicks into the pentalog. Excellent work from Telekanina, who takes the hold, clips the final clip. With a minute on the clock matches, ladies and gentlemen, Maria Tolokanina has climbed away into first place and possibly to her first gold medal of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season.
Two more athletes remain in this competition, and both of those athletes have the chance to take it away from her. If they climb faster, they will be ahead of her. You'll have to wait and see if that makes the difference. But until now, Maria Tolokanina is the only athlete to top. Kendra, that was pretty spectacular. It was. And a nice, exciting finish. <laughs> I'd love to see that replay. Thank you. <laughs> wow, she kicked her hand off and then just caught it at the last second. Excellent tension. Almost did a one-arm pull-up. Locked that left arm so solid. Very exciting. Brilliant work from Tolokanina. All in a day's work for the pocket rocket. Welcome. Doesn't oh, look thrilled welcome. with that. <laughs> She's annoyed that it wasn't a flawless performance. <laughs> right. With fresh front points. Sharpened tools. The man that everybody's been waiting for. A lot of North Americans tuned in to see this young man. Noah Bake. From Canada, in his second final of the season, just looking for the best part of that hold. It's a small one. Climbed really well yesterday in the semi-finals. Took third. He's definitely looking to at least maintain that position, if not get higher but matches him with the left hand there's teammate Inika Raybergen jumps across oh yes dynamic <laughs> move and excellent style from Noah Bake the young gun jumping across effortlessly love that nice to see some energy from the young Canadian who's 49 seconds ahead of Maxim Tominoff at this point now is he gonna go Let's see that in action replay. <laughs> but I want to see the mantle move. Which we missed. We are at the mercy of our Chinese broadcast team here. They control the cameras, the replays, everything. So uh, if you're wondering sometimes why we've got peculiar angles or maybe peculiar shots, it's not us, it's them. <laughs> Noah Bake reaching across a minute ahead of Tommy Loff here. Clips with the right hand, or rather it takes the hold with the right hand. Matches in on the high grip with the left. If you are watching Noah, then make sure you're hitting that like button. Share that broadcast. Get as many people tuned in as you can. Send him your energy and all your positive vibes. The young Canadian, one of the most promising athletes on the tour right now. Yet to find the look and the form to find a podium position. All in good time. One minute and five seconds ahead of Kuzovlev and Tomilov. Just looks in to check that hold. Come on, Noah. It's looking a little bit tentative in this position. A lot of the other athletes have moved through this really quickly. Places the fig nine, fig four rather. Stein in that yellow hold and there you see that structure. Still a minute and six seconds ahead of the pace. Steady there. Ah, oh, he doesn't have clip 10 yet. Just taking a second to shake. And as we've seen with all the athletes, it's all about pace on this route. Some tricky moves, but nothing too difficult. A couple of in, uh, insecure moves, but it's all about getting up to that head wall as fast as you can to make the tricky final clip. Kuzovlev and Maxim Tomilov both reaching the top with enough time, both not making the final move and making that final clip. Reaching up with the right hand. Let's see if he opts for the fig four and the skipping the hold. Matches in with the left tool, just readjusting. Come on, Noah. He opts for the fig four. Left hand up. Creeping up towards clip number 11.
There it is. 18 seconds ahead of the pace. Needs to keep that momentum going. Earlier, some people were asking what these holds are made out of. As we've said before, we have the metal holds. We have plastic. They're, they're heavy, dense plastic holds from Korea this week. And we also have rock holds. Into that Stein by clip number 12. Cuts loose, but readjusts very quickly. There it is. Twenty nine seconds ahead of the pace now. Come on, Noah. Choosing reverse grip there. God MacArthur and Inika Rayberg and his teammates cheering him loudly there. Reaches over with the right hand. Bib number zero, zero, one. Come on, Noah. Fighting the cold hands He's there. enjoying it though, look yeah. at that. Good lad, come on, Noah, let's go. Reaches behind him to make clip number 13. And across to the tip of that volume. Noah's family are all watching at home. Big shout out to those guys. I'm not sure if they'll even be able to hear me. They're probably shouting that loudly at the screen. Needs to keep moving. He's seven seconds ahead of the pace. Clip 14 made. Come on, Noah. 11 seconds ahead of the pace. Could this be the day for Noah Bake? to make his first ever World Cup podium. Just have to keep moving if that's going to be the case. Just needs to hold it together and keep moving. Solid advice from American athlete Kendra Stritch, who joins me today in the booth. If you are just tuning in, you are watching the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup in Hohuhut in Inner Mongolia. Climbing is Noah Bake in this men's final route. It's the third final of the season. Bib number 001, Noah Bake needs to move across onto that pentalog. Just slowing down a little bit. Tiring in this roof, needs to get moving and get out of the roof section. Come on, Noah. Oh, well, it's warming up out there. I think cold hands are really getting the best of them here. Hits the hold on the pentalog. Releases and cuts it. Oof. Dangerous move there in that fig nine. But manages to hold it. Uses the legs around the pentalog to keep him in position. And oh, he's just struggling to make the clip. I think it's the cold hands here. Normally it would be easy to make that clip. Come on, Noah. There it is. Two minutes 35 on the clock, and you see he's lost 20 seconds behind the pace now. Needs to really accelerate. Reaches up with the right hand and hits it. Come on, Noah. And this is the difference now. The stopping to shake on every move is going to slow him down. Reaches behind him, hits the blue hold on the underside of that volume, cuts loose, kicks in hard. Takes a lot of core strength to just nail those feet into that roof. Fully horizontal, makes clip number 16. Come on, Noah Bake. 20 seconds off the pace now. Only one more clip, but he's got about five holds between here and there. Come on, Noah! Really needs to get out of this steep section. Get some weight onto his feet. Reaches up into the Stein. Hits it first time. Kicks in hard. Come on, Noah Bake. Oh, his feet cut loose. Manages to reconnect. Sitting in fourth position now. Places the left hand. Oh, it's not good. 
definitely tiring. Energy waning. Noah Bake of Canada really needs to pick up the pace. Still not on the hold. He's going to go for it anyway. That's a dangerous move for Noah Bake. Oh, and he's off. The foot pop. Such a shame, but a great effort. And he's stoked. <laughs> Super stoked. Definitely enjoyed himself there. Great energy. They're checking to see if he came fourth. They're trying to work out where he is in the standings. And as it is, he is in fourth place. Almost caught his axe as well. That would have been style points, wouldn't it? Let us know, fans at home, what did you think of Noah's effort? He's flat out on his back. Gave everything there. Definitely saw him tiring as he got through that roof section after being so fast in the initial part. Didn't have anything left in the top. Thank you, thank you, Noah. Thank you. And we go back to the women. There's only two women left in the lineup. And on the right hand side of the wall, there she is. It's Ireland's Ema McSwigan. The trademark green top. Terry and Michael are tuned in all the way from Arizona to cheer on Ema, who is moving nicely towards clip number four. She was looking to clip low, clip early there. Clips are worth more points than the next hold. Ten minutes for each of these athletes. Hima with six minutes 24 on the clock. Definitely behind the pace here, which is classic Hima style. Yes, it is. Yesterday, she moved really, really well. Qualified in joint first position. Talking to her this morning, she knew that she needed to go out and climb fast today. She's really good at going really fast in the last minute. He needs to pretend it's the last minute from the third minute. Exactly. It actually happened to her that. I can't remember if it was last year. I, I think, think it was last, last year. year, yep. She thought it was her last minute. Yep. She just started to steam it and had two minutes left. <laughs> and I think that's what got her into the finals. Yep. Yeah, that, I th believe that was in Korea. Yeah, that's where she came second. Look yep. at that. One minute and 11 seconds behind the pace. I've, I've considered yelling one minute earlier to her, <laughs> but... <laughs> Hide in the clock. Ema McSwigan moving through clip number seven now. Ema McSwigan hits the left hand. whole minute behind the pace of Maria. Maria Tolkanina, current first place after topping the route with a minute left on the clock. That's a whole minute behind and then a whole minute again that Tolkanina's ahead. Right. McSwigan's got a lot of work to do just to get to the top, never mind to make up a whole minute. <laughs> But well. she, she is super comfortable in that roof figure four, figure nine terrain. So I think we're going to see her speed up here. So that's Zore Abdolakani of Iran, who lives and trains in South Korea with Ima.
，现场的各位，我们看到的依然是二零一七到二零一八赛季，咱们的世界攀冰世界杯的比赛现场，朋友们加油！现在依然是男子以及女子难度的决赛已经进行到了尾声，现在场上是倒数第二位出场的爱尔兰的选手埃米尔，加油埃米尔 ，Come on！ Turning the axe round, she opts to use the undercut on that volume. Only one other person's done that, which was Enni Bertling, and she popped there. But it's no trouble for Ema. Climbing through the sequence as it was set. Reaches up with her right hand, easily makes that move. 我们看到埃米尔动作直接的转换，非常的漂亮。Back into the nine over the left. Yeah. Whole one minute nineteen seconds off pace now. Still faster than Vlasova and Edler. If she can keep this pace, she will climb into a silver medal position. Currently sitting in fourth. She makes this next clip and next move, then she'll go ahead of Edler. Easily sticks that. Look at that. So strong, Yima McSwigan. Even catches the clip on her leg. Not sure that was intentional. If it was, it would definitely be style points. <laughs> I don't think she was thinking about that. I want to introduce style points. I think it should be a thing. <laughs> Make the rating more subjective. Yeah. <laughs> One minute behind the pace at clip 13. Cold hands may be causing us some problems again. Into the fig nine. There it is. Into that Stein. Keeps the feet high. Into the fig nine. Into a four. She now sits in a bronze medal position. If she can climb one move further, she'll go ahead of Vlasova and is guaranteed a bronze. Can Just needs to release this? that axe. Oh, yes. Look at that. Ema, so strong. Come on, Ema. Just can't find the rope. Now. Reaches down. So Come on. Can she top it? Can she top it? This is the question. <laughs> can she top it? Come on, Ema. Get that clip. Ema McSwigan has clip 14. No, she doesn't. Mm. Oh, no, I thought she had it. Oh, no. The time is ticking. So exciting. Oh, no, Eva can't make the clip. She needs this clip. To be guaranteed bronze, she needs this clip. There it is. Yes. Takes the next hold. She is now guaranteed go, bronze. Go, go. Can she top? This is going to be a lot to ask. Look at the speed on her now. Matches in. Flicks around. Five seconds on the clock. Needs to stay composed. Reaches out to the top hold. And it's not going to be fast enough for a top. Oh, that clip just causing her the problems there. Such a shame. What an effort. No top for McSwigan. She's going to have to take the fall. Oh, no, they'll let her clip. Will they? They will. It's no top. But it's a great effort nonetheless. For Ema McSwigan, who's guaranteed bronze medal. And we'll just wait for Wunxian Shin now to see whether it's a silver or a bronze that Ema walks away with. So exciting. Amazing work there from the Irish climber. The only climber to represent Team Ireland. Going it alone for the Emerald, Emerald Isle. Such a shame about the tangle there on clip 14. If she'd have kept that going, that momentum, for sure she would have had enough time to top. She should be happy with that climb, though. 
Weichi Huang there in the white helmet, Juana Maria Harabaju in the orange helmet. Two of our international judges, Weichi from Taipei, Juana Maria from Romania. And now, the man of the moment. Last week in Rabenstein, look at that, he got the mantle move. Nice. I love that. Last week in Rabenstein, he made ice climbing history. Oh no, he's in the hole, he's in the tee nut. Kendra, there he, he's come out of it. He's readjusted. I will get my full sentence out in a minute, but we're just watching that carefully. So he'll have been told by the judges he needed to readjust or fear being disqualified. You're not allowed to use the, the bolt hole. So as I was saying, last week, Mohamed Azaf Darian made climbing history in Rabenstein, taking the first ever gold medal for an Iranian ice climber. The week before, he made history, taking the first ever medal for an Iranian ice climber in Sasfe, where he got bronze. He's only 25 years old. He's a firefighter full-time, but somehow find his time to train to a standard that is putting him in positions to qualify for finals in both lead and speed and be medal contention for both. Kendra, it's pretty phenomenal. It's amazing. And he does it with a lot of style. He's a fun climber to watch in both lead and speed. Very athletic, very powerful. One of our shorter athletes, so often has to be dynamic. And he's quite humble as well in his success. If you can hear the fireworks in the background, that's our coal fire really raging. He took that stone hold too, then moving on to the intellect. Interestingly, he's a minute and 12 seconds behind the pace that Noah Bake set. Wow. What we'll have to see, oh, he's picking up now, like 30 seconds behind. What we'll have to see, oh, she's happy. <laughs> she knows that she's got a medal. That's always the fun thing to watch. The athletes come down from their climb. They have no idea where they're placed. You know, even if they've climbed well but didn't get top, or even if they top, they don't know if they were the fastest. So they don't know until somebody tells them when they hit the ground. Reza Safdarian of Iran climbing in this final, the lead competition, the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup brought to you by the North Face Korea. We are live from Hohuhotu in Inner Mongolia, Autonomous Region of China. If you are just joining us, a very good morning. Time here is 10 minutes before midday, eight hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. If you're tuning in from the United States, good evening. Two more climbers remain in both the men's and women's competition. Or rather, one more in each competition, two altogether. Lexi Dengin will climb after Mohamed Reza Safdarian. Yun Sion Shin of Korea will climb after him as well. She'll be our final athlete, first place qualifier yesterday. And as Safdarian approaches the steeper section, we'll see if his fitness pays off. Noah Bake was way ahead of the pace up until it turned into a full arch. And then he tired, his hands were cold, it was very obvious. See if Safdarian suffers the same fate. Looking strong so far, though, Kendra. He is. See how he moves through this hanging section. Three minutes 45 seconds on the clock. Now I have to say, despite him being behind the pace, 
he looks really fresh and we know that he can move fast on slightly overhanging terrain it's definitely too early to call it but I think we could be in with a good chance of still seeing a top agreed if he can maintain this pace through the top and not get slowed down He's like the other athletes have been so consistent from the moment that we saw him climb he hasn't stopped to shake or barely stopped to shake you know just the odd one two like this Whereas some of the other athletes were spending 20, 30 seconds. And look at that. Look at that pace that he's picked up. Yep. A whole 20 seconds faster now than Kuzovlev, who was so fast through that section. That's exactly what we're talking about. That consistency of speed, the fluid movement is going to really make the difference. Approaching the last part of this horizontal section. Hamud Reza Safdarian still sitting in seventh place. commits and cuts loose onto that left hand matches him with the right switches to the fig four over the right hand <laughs> reaches across himself it's going to be a tricky clip to make in that position Dealing with body position, but also rope drag from having so much rope out. <laughs> so he's lost 11 seconds behind the pace, so that's a whole 30 seconds that he's lost. Well, let's see what he does now with his top section. 1 minute 51 seconds on the clock for Iranian climber Mohamed Reza Kureye Safdarian. Now sitting in joint fourth. Starting to shake a little bit more, Kendra. Yeah. What do we think? Cold or pump? Oof, that's not the place to hold that hole. It's the same place that we saw Noah Bake hold it and fall. Safdarian looking solid, though. He's going to readjust. Excellent decision. Matches in with the left. One minute, 12 seconds. I think this is pump. This is definitely pump, and that medal hope is slipping away with every shake of the hand. Kuzovlev, Tomilov, in fact, two Tomilovs, Maxim and Alexei Tomilov, and Kuzovlev both reaching that final hanging barrel. Look at this speed now, yep. Oh! <gasps> Manages to hold that, that was really close there. The left tool popping off that red hole, and again, can't hold it twice. What a shame, checking his picks, just couldn't get the stick there with that left hand. No medal for Mohamed Reza Safdarian, just couldn't hold the tension there with the right hand and he came reeling off backwards. Such a shame for the Iranian climate, but that is competitions. It looked really strong up until that point. Yeah, he, you know, maybe, maybe that pace was uh, too quick. He needed to shake a little bit earlier to maintain it more. But so only one more competitor in the men's. Alexi Dengen will be up next. But first, we watch our final competitor in the women's competition. Current lead world champion, South Korea's Won Seon Shin. 37-year-old competitor. Still a formidable force on the ice climbing circuit. Beautiful Starting quick start here. Very quickly is exactly what I was about to say. There's Young Yun Lee. Had a great final earlier. Quick and fluid. It's always really fun to watch Sunny climb. That signature one-two kick is so good to watch. Places the tool and then one-two kick. Lots of Koreans on Facebook tuning in, cheering on Sunny. Big reach with the right hand straight into that Stein. There it is. Has it as a backhand. Cranks off it with the left. Makes the move with the right. 
好的，现场的各位，我们看到依然是二零一七到二零一八赛季国际登联攀冰世界杯中国哈苏海战，三天的比赛到了今天的最后一天。终于是进入到了收官的环节，我们看到女子的难度的决赛，现在是最后一位选手在岩壁上面进行攀爬，来自韩国的选手邢沃瑟。Big reach with the left hand off that stone with the right. Oh no, it's an undercut look. No head of the axe on the wall. Powerful move, but really cruising through that sequence as she makes clip number six. She's two seconds behind the pace set by Tolkanina. She's exactly where she needs to be as she makes these moves through towards clip number seven. Tolkanina finishing the route with a top and a whole minute ahead of time. If Won Tian Shin wants to qualify for a gold medal, then she needs to top with faster than a minute. Now a second ahead of Tolkienina. Ema McSwigan currently sitting in a silver medal position. We'll be watching closely to see if her friend Wunxian Shin will take the silver from her and bump her down to a bronze. Big reach with the left hand. Misses it first time. Hits it second. Tolkienina hitting that one easily on the first go. Clip eight made. 14 seconds ahead of the pace. This is exactly the type of performance that we expect to see from Munsion Shin. Big reach behind her with the right hand. Touches him with the left. Clip nine made. Two seconds ahead. Now, don't think that she's lost any time. Tolokanina clipped that a move earlier. And you'll see that reflected, I think, in the speed of clip number 10. Wonsun Shin moves up with the left hand to hit that intellect hold. Very consistent movement. Very relaxed pace. But by no means slow. There it is, 13 seconds ahead. Exactly what I thought. Wun Xion Xin opting to use the undercut intellect hold on the base of that volume. Makes the move with the right hand. The other climbers we saw skipped that. Three have used that method, the other five didn't. Big fig four with the right hand out behind her to that soccer shaped volume. So I think this is where she just gained a bunch of time on Maria because Maria was, um, had to try that move multiple times. She did. Clip 11 made. 32 seconds ahead of the pace. Wunxian Shin needs to keep moving but has a good buffer now. Ema McSwigan so close to a top but got in a tangle at the last clip. Second to last clip. Yeah, if we don't count the if we don't count the chains. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> she made the last clip just fine, just past time. Hits the right hand above clip number twelve. Releases that tool. Smart clip there for clip 12. 40 seconds ahead of the pace. And clip 13. 43 seconds ahead of Tolokanina. This is expert stuff here from Wunsion Shin. Who at the moment just looks completely in her comfort zone. Yeah, expert rope management there as she goes in and out of figure fours and figure nines. She's making this look like a qualifier, Kendra. <laughs> Ops to skip that clip for a second. Really smart move, using the body weight of the move and the left hand to pull the slack across herself. So efficient. A whole minute ahead of Maria Tolkanina. I tell you what, Kendra, Wun Xion Shin is the world champion for a reason, and you are seeing that reason right now. She is so smart, so professional. Beautiful climbing. 
just sublime to watch. Effortless movement, hits the pentalogue, kicks across into it. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, I don't want to say it. <laughs> oh, I nearly did. Last clip. Come on, Sonny, do me a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, with a beautiful performance, a whole minute and nine seconds ahead of the pace, with two minutes and seven seconds left on the clock, South Korea's Won Seon Shin climbs to her first gold medal of the season, ahead of her home competition in Cheongsong next weekend. That is a statement of intent. Kendra, that was beautiful to watch. Amazing. So, so good. 37 years old, but in absolutely no way past it. Won Seon Shin hugs Naksu Kim, the Korean judge, as she's told that she's got the gold. Awesome performance from our penultimate athlete. Look at that moment. Matched it in. So relaxed. Absolutely stunning. No. Maria Talakunina can't argue with that, can she? No. She's happy. Oh, Hannah Ray Song will be watching that. I wonder what she'll be thinking. Because that was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Not a single mistake. Not a single error. Move by move perfection. Shaked in the right places. Shaked? Shook in the right places. <laughs> Just perfect. And now we see the full route from the men. Now a final male climber in this 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup final here in Ho Hu Hot. It's Russia's Alexei Dengin from Moscow. Gold medalist in Sasfe two weeks ago. Co-commentator in the finals last week in Rabenstein. Chongji, So Dengin now in that disc, approaching this dynamic move. We've seen people span it, we've seen people jump. What will Dengin opt for? He trains moves like this all the time. Whoa, so good. <laughs> you know, I knew he was gonna jump Kendra. He said to me last week off air that he trains dynamic moves in training. All the Russians laugh at him. And they always say, when are you ever going to have to do that? And of course, he stuck the move in Saz Bay, And he's looking at that move and just thinking, come on, try My it. favorite move there. Oh, we're going to replay the jump. <laughs> All points off. <laughs> yeah. It's like he did it just to show that he could. It was completely unnecessary. But so good. And then with the big mantle to make clip number seven. Oh, Alexi, you are a Bobby Dazzler. Matches in on the top of that very small circular hold. Big fig four. That's clip number eight. And he's quite a ways behind the pace so far. Definitely doesn't rule him out yet. Reaches across into that powerful shoulder move with the left hand. There's clip number nine.
straight into the intellect. And he skips that hold. Reaches up with the right hand. Now where skipping that hold seemed to have cost the other guys time, I actually think it's gained Dengen some time because he just moves so quickly into that backhand with the right. 29 seconds off the pace. That's much, much quicker. He's made up a whole minute there. Behind our fastest climber to that point, which was Noah Bake of Canada. Climbed so well in his first final of the season. No, yes, no. He made finals last week in Rappenstein. Just having a little internal argument with myself there. <laughs> we'll stay <very> externally. <laughs> Uh, someone here is accusing Alexei of watching too much cliffhanger. Yes. Uh, do you know what? He has seen it. We were talking about cliffhanger as well. <laughs> Last week he's made the clip at 11, reaches across with the right hand, and he's gaming, gaining time with every move here. Come on, Dengen. Big reach behind him into that backhand Stein by clip number 12. Pulls the rope across himself to clip. Lost a little bit of time there, but he's still moving well enough. We can see that the Tomilov brothers, who both reached the top, were a good 32 seconds behind him. There's Aaron Montgomery of the USA. Dengin flowing through these moves. They call him Yosha. That's his nickname. Don't know why, but it is. 13 seconds off the pace. This is excellent speed here from Dengin. Easily into that big nine over the right hand. Back into the four over the left. Just watching people talking. Hima with Swigan and Munshin Shin there talking about their climbs. Hima now with a bronze medal. Ray Tolkienina with a silver. Munshin Shin with the gold. Dang it, clip 14. Just struggling to find that position. Noah Bake had the same trouble from that pentalog. Hits it with the right hand second time. Kicks across. And I have to say, Kendra, he doesn't look tired. No. Looking solid. Those shakes are very relaxed. Oh, little slip there with the left foot. And at this point, this is where we need to see a pickup of the pace from Dengin. He untangles the rope from his axe. Matches in high. Into the fig nine. Matches in, switches to the four over the right hand, uses the left hand to stabilize himself and make clip 16. Come on, Dengin. Six seconds behind Kozovlev, who lost some time here. The fastest Tomilov brother, 12 seconds behind the pace. Of course, it was Maxim Tomilov that got closest to topping this route. Takes that hold from the top the first time. Brilliant route reading. 
，一二名啊，展示。全男子选手，来到了倒数第六个支点。So I think he can speed up these next moves. He really needs to. One minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Hits it with the right hand first time. We saw Noah Bake fall off on that move, but he's stuck it. Mohamed Reza Safdarian fell at the next move. Dengin holds it. He goes across himself. Kicks in high. Matches with the left hand. This is the moment that Alexei Dengin can decide his fate. Takes the right hand, leans out behind him onto that hanging barrel with one minute and three seconds on the clock. Commits to the figure nine over the left hand. Back to the four. Takes the top hold. 55 seconds on the clock. Into the figure nine. Tool in the mouth. Back to the four. Reaches behind himself for that rope. And as we've said before, this is the crux. He has to find out how he can make this clip. 40 seconds on the clock for Dengin. Reaches down again, pulls hard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Bib 007. The name's Dengin, Alexi Dengin, and he tops the route in fine style and takes his second gold medal of the season, third gold medal overall. Look at that passion. Alexi Dengin, you are a Bobby Dazzler. You deserve that gold medal. And the team and the people on the floor will be there to congratulate him. Kendra, another sensational performance from a phenomenal Russian athlete. It was. That was amazing. Gordon McCarthy shouted in his face. Oh, that was so close. I didn't know whether it was going to happen. Well, he really navigated this little barrel with expertise. You know, he moved to that second hold way faster than anybody else did. He just had his body set up the right way. There was no tangle in the rope. He knew that he just needed to get across himself, and he did. And that is another gold medal. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, Dengin. So psyched for that guy. I think he's a bit tired now. I think so. Amazing work. And we've just had it confirmed that we'll be going directly into the speed finals at 12.30 p.m. local time. Wunshan Shin there, gold medalist in the women's competition. Alexi Dengin, gold medalist in the men's competition. Silver medals taken by Maria Talakanina of Russia and Maxim Tomilov of Russia. Bronze medals for Ima McSwiggin and Alexi Tomilov. Brilliant finals here. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with the speed final shortly. If you have tuned in, thank you so much for joining us here in Ho Hu Ho Tu. In Mongolia, China. Kendra Stritch, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Big thank you to the North Base. Let's take a quick look at those results. There it is. Wunshan Shin in first, Maria Tolokanina second, Ima McSwigan third, Katarina Vlasova in fourth, Masha Edler fifth, Inika Rayberg in sixth, Enni Bertling in seventh, and Nadia Galyamova in eighth. The men's results. Alexei Dengin takes his second gold medal of the season ahead of Maxim Tomilov in second. Nikolai Kuzovlev in third. Alexei Tomilov in fourth. Mohamed Reza Safdarian in fifth. Noah Bake in sixth. Yung Yon Lee in seventh. And Dmitry Grabenikov in eighth. Thank you so much for joining us here in Ho Hu Ho Tu this morning. My name's Liam Lonsdale. It's been my pleasure to have you all along. We will be back in about 15 minutes' time for the speed finals here in China. Until then, have a great afternoon.